exactly like in the case of module 1 that is balance of payment module 2 is also equally important and module 2 is also dealing with concepts so external sector module 1 2 3 even module 4 all are concepts but all are very important modules because from this also there have been seven questions been asked in 2020 so from in, uh, in 2020 module 1 there have been a question from module 2 there is a question module 3 there is a question so last year external sector have been very important okay all were conceptual questions even though questions arise because of current affair all were conceptual even if you have not read the current affair but you have if you have gone through our class notes and material and classes that will be sufficient okay but uh, to understand this module anyone who have not attended mod, uh, the module 1 classes they will have a problem a little bit of problem all were there na balance of payment you are there you are there okay so what is what we studied in module 1 under balance of payment what i told you it's an external account eh? all the external transactions of the country will be reflected in that account in the form of receipts and payment all the exports are receipts all the imports are payments okay then it uh, we have we have studied the components of current account and components of capital account there have been questions from the components of current account as well as capital account okay so with that we will move to module 2 now convertibility so before discussing convertibility you need to understand that every country is having a legal tender money or legal tender currency means every government every country's government and its central bank will recognize a particular currency so only that currency will be circulated in that country so in india that legal tender currency is indian rupee indian rupee like pakistan there is pakistan rupee is there in nepal nepal rupee is there okay but in india that legal currency is indian rupee now but when if we do external transaction if we do external transaction what will happen uh, indian rupee will not be accepted indian rupee will not be accepted it should be uh, for all the external transaction that is all the export and import transaction which is mentioned in the current account as well as all the receipts and payment in the capital account it should be through a commonly accepted currency what we call it as hard currency okay so when we do external trade that is export and import both in goods and services as well as when there is uh, capital movements between two countries or more than two countries everything will be reflected in the balance of payment okay and i told you the most prominent global currency not uh, we use as well as other country uses us dollar so us dollar is a hard currency okay so almost all the in in india all the external transaction is reflected in dollars only but it doesn't mean that only with dollar only we transact we transact in euro we transact in japanese yen we transact in pound sterling etc but what we'll do we will convert all those currencies into dollar and we will say that this much so currently we are having a, a total foreign currency assets this is a word we use foreign currency assets is one of the major component of forex reserve it's denominated in dollar bop is denominated in dollar okay so why these uh, why us currency or european currency was selected is that their value is almost stable the features of an hard currency is that they are not volatile their value is almost throughout a certain period their value is stable and they are highly liquid highly liquid means that dollar if you have dollar you can easily convert it into indian rupee you have to just go to this uh, marine drive or that there are certain even uh, there are two categories officially you can convert unofficially also you can convert if you go to that uh, place broadway if you if you are a foreigner then sir dollar 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 you want dollar <laughs> they will come to you <laughs> so what what is the difference is that you have to pay only less commission but if you go through these money ch ch transfer channels now there are many there they will charge you extra so you will prefer that but one is legal other is illegal but we are not unless and until that money is not used for me, uh, negative purposes like uh, terror or other terror activity or other anti nexal activity otherwise uh, to an extent it's not a problem but everything starts in a small manner and reaches big amount okay or gold smuggling everything happens there like that only 
see in, in Kerala is famous for gold smuggling, you know that, no? Yes? See, you are hearing news in the customs. Actually, if one lakh, uh, I am just giving an example, okay? If one ton of gold reaches here, only uh, maybe you can say one kg will be the issue. Otherwise, they, they have to show something, something they are uh, this thing, okay? So, all are actually, they are not legally reported and they are not reflected in the balance of payment also, okay? So, but as the time grows, okay, now it is very difficult for these smugglers to do business in India, not only in India, everywhere. Because one way or another, in one chain, they will get caught because all our movement is there. We, you, if you are carrying mobile, means wherever you go, I will be there. <laughs> means the US GPS will be looking at you, ah, okay, <laughs> you are doing this. Now they will know that this uh, number of five, uh, 10 students at a teacher is uh, taking classes from US White House, they will be seeing it. Similarly, we have a small White House in uh, Delhi PMO. <laughs> they will also be watching, ah, okay, Chalo, no problem. So we are always watched, remember, okay. And imagine if when you become IAS officer, unluckily for you, you can't even, uh, now the corruption is almost, uh, uh, it's very difficult for IAS, IPS officers because they are waiting. Okay. Anyway, what I am trying to say is that illegal things is not reflected when it comes to Hawala transactions. They are not Hawala, you know, we will convert. It uh, all are uh, a pity. Uh, there, there is a system. They have a better system than our own government system. They are more secure. They are more confidential. They are more sincere. Okay. So, that's, it. that's the reason why uh, they have been so successful, okay. They have a chain of command. If one person get caught, they will, who is the real person, they can't just say, you, all these things you have seen in movie, okay. Anyway, so regarding convertibility, because convertibility is all about that, okay, converting one currency into another. Now, why we, we uh, reserve these hard currencies like US dollar is that because of its stability and liquidity. You know the meaning, stable means? The value will be stable. Liquidity means you can easily convert into cash. Okay. So, convertibility is nothing but your freedom. It's a right. Convertibility is a right of an resident individual who is staying in India. A resident individual who is staying in India, he or she has the right to convert the domestic currency, in India's case, Indian currency into foreign currency and vice versa. That is what is called as convertibility. So, convertibility is nothing but the right or freedom of a resident as well as non-resident, you know, to, to convert domestic currency into foreign currency and vice versa, foreign currency into domestic currency, domestic currency into foreign currency. So, conversion, so convertibility is nothing but converting one currency into another currency. For example, if you have thousand dollar, you are having thousand dollar, okay, and one dollar is rupees 72. So, what you can do, you can, just see, I am not talking about commission charges, there will be a commission charges will be there, but without taking into consideration commission charges, so you can convert 1000 dollar into 72,000 rupees, this is convertibility. Now, this is one way of domestic currency converting into, sorry, foreign currency converting into domestic currency. Similarly, if you are having 73,000 you can convert it into thousand dollar by considering the commission charges. So, two different way: domestic currency into foreign currency, foreign currency into domestic currency. That is the meaning of vice versa. Okay, so we know. So, are you clear with convertibility? They asked a very simple question: What is convertibility? Okay, see the 2015 question. In the year 2015, they asked a question. Simple question: Convertibility of rupee. They are asking about convertibility of rupee. Implies. What does it imply? Being able to convert rupee notes into gold, is it correct? No. Allowing the value of rupee to be fixed by market forces? No. Freely permitting, freely permitting the conversion of rupee to other currencies and vice versa. C is your answer. A simple question. 2000 year, year is 2015. Hmm? Now, there are three types of convertibility. There are three. Where is Anaga? She is missing. Yesterday also she was not there. Okay. <coughs> okay, no convertibility. See, from the term itself, see, every country follow any of these convertibility regime. Either they will say that they don't, they don't allow conversion. 
that is that country follow no convertibility regime some countries will allow full convertibility i'll explain what is full convertibility and no convertibility and some allows partial convertibility in india we are having partial convertibility india is having uh, countries like us uh, canada european union even russia they are having full convertibility okay but majority of the countries are having partial convertibility ideally there is no country which is having no convertibility so this is now only an idealistic situation either countries will be full having full convertibility or partial convertibility so now i'll in order to understand no convertibility for a country to become uh, no convertibility regime which india tried after 1947 okay india during this period 1947 to 1991 was a closed economy only in a closed economy no convert no convertibility is possible in this time period after independence till economic reforms was launched india was almost a closed economy closed economy means we never allow import complete economy is closed only transaction will be within the domestic transaction domestic trade no international trade no international transaction etc no imports no exports no capital movements no fdi no fpi no external loans etc but even though we were a closed economy unfortunately due to the india peculiar situation in 1940s late 40s and 1950s and early 1960s we were a, we were importing food grains due to severe droughts but after we implemented green revolution that problem was sorted out but we as part of the second five year plan as part of industrialization we started importing heavy machineries capital goods so one way or another then we started after 90s uh 1970s we started importing petroleum products all makes india even though india says to be a closed economy we were not a closed economy okay so that we will discuss in detail regarding closed economy in detail in foreign trade policy module okay so are you clear with no convertibility okay now full convertibility see now try to understand full convertible means like suppose you are you are a karorpadi imagine you are having you are a karorpadi in india you are having a, a massive wealth of 1000 crore and in that 200 crore is in cash in different bank deposits like that fd etc now you want to purchase a palace in buckingham or in uk whatever it is if you if they are ready to sell you can buy if you have money or if you want to buy an island you know the film stars have their own islands okay so they can all buy it but in that case the indian government will say that where are you going <laughs> see if you now what is the problem is with this convertibility na full convertibility okay so they have to convert indian rupee into foreign currency where in india in the indian continent itself in the in the indian foreign exchange market so there is a market for, for see where conversion happens in a market what is called as foreign exchange market everything is now integrated online but everything happens in india we have a foreign exchange market what is the function of a foreign exchange market here foreign exchange foreign exchange is nothing but foreign currencies foreign currencies are traded so there is daily sales uh, daily sale is going on uh, converting indian rupee into dollar dollar into euro like that it's happening in the foreign exchange market in foreign exchange market only currencies will be traded okay we'll come across different terms what is called as currency war currency we'll come to it okay slowly we'll come to it okay so are you clear what is foreign exchange market it's a market where foreign currencies are traded so there are genuine there are regular people like importers and exporters who will come uh, to convert their currency for example exporter will come to foreign exchange market because exporters have got they made a shipment and they received 75000 dollar so what the exporters will do in the foreign exchange market they will sell the dollar and take indian rupee and then they will settle all their dues but importer they they are having indian rupee they want to import they will go to the foreign exchange market and get dollars and then this dollar is paid to the imported company importing company like this is happening in the foreign exchange market okay so here so in full convertibility regime india is not a full convertibility like us or european union you can there you have the freedom to convert any or their domestic currency without any limit there is no limit you can conduct 
as much as for any transaction the government will not you can you can do any transaction import transaction export transaction you can borrow ex through external commercial borrowing okay so any transaction for any transaction and there is no limit also you can bring 5 crore 10 crore 1000 crore or you can invest 1000 crore in foreign currency in a different country everything is possible so no limit has been set and there is no restriction on any transaction also so that is what is called as fund con convertibility but in india if we do so what will happen is that why we didn't went for full convertibility because already we are a country with current account deficit only exception being 2021 because we have seen in module 1 in the last uh, 40 years in the economic survey discussion i told you okay only once in a while we have current account surplus but we are generally a current account deficit country uh, we are having bop surplus because of capital account this capital you know any time it can go back to their own country you cannot trust them current account surplus is the most safest thing so already we are having current account deficit okay plus when there is any global crisis when there is any this was the 2020 prelims question okay at a moment you know what this there is a concept called as hot money hot money hot money you know what is hot money hot money is nothing but fpi foreign portfolio investment when they hear a negative news for example in the election result will be coming on may 2nd if they feel that it will create instability the result will create instability in the country suddenly market will crash this market is crashed not by domestic investors by foreign portfolio investors they will withdraw the money and go to some other safe haven so if there is any massive uh, like global finance what we are having if we continued now very interesting thing now when we were under covid uh, 19 restrictions our stock market was rising because foreign portfolio investors knows that okay india is one of those country where in future there will be growth even the lockdown is for a temporary period and they will come back okay so that is so if there is if we if we go for full convertibility what will happen since we are having current account deficit and then we need a strong banking system to implement it we don't have a strong banking system many of our banks are losses they are having huge bad loans and especially during lockdown it has worsened and uh, we need to have forex reserve but that forex reserve we know that we have accumulated forex reserve mainly through capital account surplus only not due to current account surplus so the condition is not ready so anytime this foreign currency will go and it will affect the value of indian rupee and it will affect the exporters and importers so we are not ready to implement full convertibility okay so full convertibility is for without any restriction you can and without any limit uh, means you can convert the currency you have the freedom to convert the currency now partial convertibility is there are a lot of restrictions they will say restriction on what purpose they will ask you for what purpose you want to go out you want to study abroad okay so, done you want to purchase an asset okay to this limit only this much amount only you can purchase asset in the foreign country only per year the limit set is two lakh fifty thousand dollar beyond that you cannot as an individual okay so there are restrictions in india regarding how, for what purpose and that quantity or the value of transaction okay so in india is india have never gone to this level india where during this period a no convertibility regime but after after the economic reforms we shifted to partial convertibility we'll discuss how we have shifted